everyone and welcome back to Zoo Tycoon 2 and it has been quite a while. I am so excited to be back. I mean, look at our turtles. <laughs> you know, you guys, I think that they're just kind of happy to snooze here. I don't think they've moved. Wait, wait, were they just mating? Was that, was that what was happening here? Is that what just happened? Oceana! Oceana! <gasps> I think they were! They were just mating! I thought they were just taking a snooze in the golden corn brush here, but I think they were just trying to have some babies. Oh, that's so exciting! And meanwhile, my platypus is angry as usual because he can't eat any shellfish. Why are my platypus so difficult sometimes? Why can't you guys eat? Why can you guys never eat? What am I going to do with them? Okay, one second. But well, hello everybody and welcome back to Zoo Tycoon 2. It has been a little while since I've been able to visit our beautiful island treasures zone. But don't you guys worry. That is just... Let's come over here. I probably made everything terribly worse. But I want to see if they can eat. Alright, let's heal. Let's replenish. Come on, you guys. Eat. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Look at them. The food is like right here. If you guys can't manage it now, I just don't know how to help you. I just really wouldn't know how to help you from here. And they have their baby somewhere, so I need to find where their baby is. Oh my gosh. Look at this perfect platypus action. And I was actually just reading about a platypus that they found in a storm drain that they've decided to name Percy. Um, which <laughs> I know where Percy is from, like Phineas and Ferb I think it is. But are you going to eat? Please tell me you're eating. Do you have food? I hope you have food. You have so many shellfish. Look, these little things are going to start nibbling at my toes. Oh, gosh. But yes, uh, where's the baby, too? I'm a little bit worried about the baby. Let's just make sure the baby is okay. And then we'll check on the spotted couscous, who seem to be having some issues, too. Let's move the jar with fish over here. All right, I hope they're okay. Spotted couscous. What are you doing, little spotted couscous? He's trapped. Hey, why, are, why are my spotted couscous in crates again? I don't understand what my keepers are thinking. Who knows? Ah, but yes, I have been away for a little while visiting my little sister for her wedding. And I went to so many zoos while I was gone, you guys. I went to St. Louis Zoo and Kansas City Zoo. And look at the baby couscous eating. Oh, look at me, the little thing. It's so cute. It's just the most precious thing. But I went to the St. Louis Zoo and I went to the Kansas City Zoo and absolutely loved it. It was fantastic. I got so many ideas for how we could build our zoos for all of the different exhibits, for things I want to add in zoo crafting. I saw so many different creatures, a lot of polar bears too. Um, polar bears were big at both places. Why are you darting? What are you doing? Stop this! Stop this! He's fine! What is your problem? What are you doing? Why? Why? Why did he just dart my couscous? He wasn't going anywhere. What is wrong with this man? He just whips out a gun and like starts shooting my couscous. Why are these people unhappy? I can't see any animals from here. Were you guys trapped? Okay. I have no idea what's going on. The curious couscous is having some issues. My platypus are finally eating. There's a plus. Oh goodness. Well, this is keeping us busy on our toes right away. Um, oh, and there's the baby platypus. There he is. So tiny. But yeah, I was just reading about how there was a baby platypus over in um, Australia who got stuck in a storm drain. And they rescued him and named him Percy. And I thought that was absolutely adorable. Let's try getting him a little squeaky toy too. Look at him swim on their backs. Oh gosh, they're so precious. Good. And I've got somebody educating everyone about these. Um, we've got our Galapagos tortoise who really aren't moving that much. Occasionally mating with Oliver. Okay. So that's happening with our Galapagos tortoises. Why is Curious Couscous put in a crate? I just don't understand why they're being put in crates. Curious Couscous is fine. He's minding his own business. Wow. I don't understand what my, my keepers are trying to do. I think maybe they're freaking out because of the trees. Is the Couscous... Look at him! Are you okay? Are you okay? Was that too traumatic? Too traumatic to be in a little crate? Are you alright, Curious Couscous? Oh my gosh. I don't know about this, guys. Is he gonna be alright? Are you okay, buddy? He's, he's sleeping just on his back. Okay, I think he's gonna be alright. Well, let's go ahead and start working on a new exhibit, because that's something I noticed at the zoos that I went to, is that they had tons of exhibits. And so it made me feel kind of bad, because in our, our zoos and in our zoo crafting zoo, I tend to have just like a few exhibits, and then I like work on making them perfect. But there really was something to be said for being able to turn in a circle or, or go to one of the specialty areas, like the insect houses, and just turn, and you could just see 
so many different species all at once. So I want to get a bird in of some type. So let's get like some sort of cool little bird going on over here. And let's see what our options are. So Avocets, and yeah, there were a lot of polar bears. We saw two polar bears, a three-year-old male, and I think a four-year-old female, and the male was significantly bigger than the female. And I didn't really expect that. I thought they'd be kind of similar in size, or maybe the female would be a little bigger because she has to have babies. But no, the male polar bear who's um, three years old and at the St. Louis Zoo was huge, like absolutely huge. Ooh, cassowaries. Now there's a bird, an Australian islandy type of bird that we could add in over here. But I think we'll go for something a little bit smaller than cassowaries. Just first up, maybe some chickens? I do love chickens. And we saw llamas, and the llama tried to spit at me, and I was like, not having any of that. Llamas and I have never really gotten along. We just haven't. Do their Eurasian curlew? Yeah, llamas and I just have never gotten along very well. There was, um, the dick dick was at both zoos as well. They're so adorable. I think we saw more of them at the Kansas City Zoo. Overall, I like the St. Louis Zoo a lot better. Uh, it was just absolutely stunningly amazing. How about some ground doves? This'll do. We'll put some little ground doves in. Yeah, because we don't need a big exhibit. I just want like kind of a nice little, a nice little birdie exhibit. So we'll put some ground doves down. Maybe mix in a, another creature or two in the future. Like maybe a flamingo? There's always flamingos. Um, or what about this? What's this guy? Common eater? Maybe. There could be some ducks mixed in. Mandarin duck. I wouldn't have mind having some mandarin ducks just kind of mixed in. But we'll start with the ground dove and just give them a nice little exhibit over here. Just to kind of mix in more animals. Because like I said, that's something I really noticed at the zoos is that there were a lot of different animals to be able to just admire and look at. All right, let's go ahead. We'll just do the this kind of pattern we've got going down. All right, hang on. Why are you unhappy, woman? I need to find a bathroom soon. I don't like this zoo. Oh, well, hang in there. We'll make it nicer. You just wait. You just wait and see. We're going to make this really nice zoo. Let's widen the path first thing. And the paths at St. Louis Zoo were really nice. They had like little paw prints and everything in them when we were walking in the uh, like African and Asian paths. And it was really fun to see the little paw prints. We saw a, a bush dog for the first time. I saw painted dogs for the first time in real life. And oh my goodness, they were so pretty. Um, I think I want to do actually like a low fence. Whoops, what am I doing over here? I think I want to put down like the hedge fences so this can kind of feel like more of a naturalistic area. And let's see. Yeah, the, the we saw the big cat exhibits. I got to kind of judge a lot of the different zoos we went to. And I have I am very critical with zoos. Because I believe if you're going to take the responsibility to have that animal, um, then you need to be like going above and beyond to make sure that the animal is going to have a very happy, wonderful life. So I'm very, very critical about the zoos we went to. And I was very happy with what I saw, especially at the St. Louis Zoo. All right, we're gonna do this right here, maybe? Like this, and then this can be maybe another area for something else. And then I need the hedge fence. So where's my little hedge fence? Here's my hedge fence. And see, I just kinda wanna make it look sort of naturalistic. Like the little bird is just in there of its own, its own desire. Oh, look at how pretty that is to let people in, wow. All right, well, I'll put like one of the fencing pieces over there. And I think I'll put another one down here. And then we can make this a wall. Like maybe we can even put in, in fact, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put in the big hedge fence, the big zoo wall right here. And this can be a privacy area for like whatever creature we end up putting down here. Um, and I might wanna move that gate then. Who knows, we'll figure it out. All right, let's get the path down. Yeah, and at the St. Louis Zoo, they had this really wonderful children's zone that had volunteers there, and they had guinea pigs you could pet, and I spent a lot of time with King Tut the guinea pig. I was quite happy. Uh, and it was just really fun to see, like, all of the info, like, graphs and all of the details and just go to a real zoo again. And then to feel how fun it is that we can come together and have our adventures in zoos every day and learn a little bit more about those awesome animals, even if we can't see them all the time. Look at our cute little ground dove. Oh, let's get this ground dove in here. All right, what do you want, buddy? What kind of things do you need? You have, let's see, tropical rainforesty type biome. So we're gonna set this ground dove up with a nice tropical rainforest biome. We'll get a little elevated nest box action going on in here for him. All right, let's put this one right there. 
And let's try putting this one like right here. And we can put a big tree right there in between. So trees, killie tree? Where's a good killie tree? Killie trees are just good, reliable trees for our animals' needs, it seems. All right, and we need to do this kind of over here. There we go. But yeah, so ground doves, what are your guys' favorite things to see when you go to a zoo? That's actually a really great question. Like, what do you know you want to see? I usually want to see the big cats, but I love giraffes. I had no idea that I was quite so enamored with giraffes until this trip. And I have discovered that I 100% am in love with giraffes. So I love seeing giraffes, personally. Um, they're definitely something I'm going to look for every time. I love going to the aviaries, too. I'm really big about going and stopping by the aviaries and seeing what they have to offer. Let's put some more food back in the air. And then let's go ahead and put in... Oh, the little chameleon tree. How is that an enrichment item for you? Who knows? Um, if I can sneak this guy back here, that would actually be really nice. All right, can I put that there? But then my, my people aren't going to be able to walk over there. Hmm dilemmas. I could put this over here, but then my people aren't going to be able to walk over. <laughs> I could put it over here. There's an option. How on earth is that even a thing? Can I really put it there? Okay. Okay, Misty Spring. If you want to go there, you can. I'm going to have to rearrange some things so that my crew can walk over. All right, I'm going to have to do this instead. And there we go, so that my people can walk in here. But I think that'll be okay. I want to put this at an angle to make it a little bit smoother. Because we're going to put in some ground doves. But it was really fun. I love going to the aviaries. Why are you guys putting my couscous in crates? Is it because they're trying to get out from, like, the trees? Maybe I need higher fences? We'll see. We will see. We might have to build a whole new couscous area because they're starting... Maybe I'll put the couscous over here. Because they're starting to multiply so quickly that I need a little bit more room for them. But yeah, it was really fun to see the, the zookeepers take care of their animals and to see one woman in the, uh, <laughs> one poor woman <laughs> who was over in with the macaws, the hyacinth macaws, and they had figured out how to break some of the metal pieces that were going over. They were like thin metal wires that go over their cages instead of like bars or anything like that. And they had recently figured out how to rip those out of their fittings. And so she had to go in there to try to fit the pieces back in place so that the birds couldn't escape. And they were like diving at her because they thought they, they were proud of their work. They didn't want her to fix it. And so she had a broom and she had to fend them off with a broom while they screamed their heads off at her so that she would be able to go in and fix what they had done and keep them from escaping and they were very smart and you could tell that she liked them just not at that moment while she's like dodging them as they're trying to like bite her and trying to escape from their little area but they had beautiful exhibits for the birds I have always loved the St. Louis bird aviary area so that was really fun to go see, even with all the chaos. We actually took a nap in there, because when you go to the zoo on a Wednesday in the middle of winter, no one's there. No one's there at all. So we managed to really just relax and have a great time. It was like having a private zoo tour. I didn't get a chance to interview any of the zookeepers, which is something I want to start doing, so you guys can enjoy that too. But we'll get there. Guests can't find an ATM. Always a wonderful problem to have, if you ask me. It means people want to spend more money here. Ooh, look at this. Ooh, that's a really nice one. I'm just going to casually put this one right here. And then let's see if we can find any other plants to sneak in here. The New Guinea is impatient. Uh, is always pretty. Don't need too many of them. All right, maybe another one back here. Just a little bit more color. Splash of color. Ooh, mushrooms. Mushrooms are always good. I always like putting mushrooms next to the watery areas. And then, let's see. That's the lamb piece. Swamp lily. Holy moly, look at the size of it. Can I put this over with our... I'm going to put this... Why do you guys have balloons in your exhibit? I'm going to put a swamp lily in with them. They're, like, cool. They like the swamp lily. Okay. Um. All right, we have the orchids. All right, I'll put down, like, a couple orchids. There we go. Then we need to change the biome in here. And maybe a couple of these things. Little, little plants, little plants. There we go. It's just nice to have just a little bit of green tucked here and there. There! I think our ground doves will enjoy this. Good. They've got the food, water, some entertainment. Um, and let's go ahead and I want to change what the exhibit looks like. And it was really fun to see how many of the creatures were so hardy because it was kind of cold when we went and there were a ton of the birds who they could have cared less 
they were enjoying themselves. They didn't notice. The owls were like kind of just peering at us. Uh, the ducks could have cared less that it was chilly. The tigers cared less. The giraffes can't really endure a lot of like sharp temperature shifts. So we actually went into the giraffe barn and that was like one of my favorite moments of the whole trip. So yes, it made me think about our zoos quite a lot and how we could build up our zoos and show them off and kind of pack in more exhibits. So on that note, let's add in the beautiful little ground doves. Aren't they just so cute? Let's just put a whole bunch of them in here. All right, we'll put in like um, five little females, maybe three or four little males. There you go, little ground doves. There you go. And blue is now pregnant. Sweet. All right. And then maybe just a couple other things. Maybe that's a lot of ground doves. Maybe we didn't need that many ground doves. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and adopt out a couple ground doves because we probably didn't need quite that many ground doves. And I kind of want to add in another type of bird. Let's go for something that's a little bit brighter. Um, that stands out a little more, even if it isn't entirely with the theme of like the island treasures that we're doing. <gasps> Scarlet Ibis. Oh, I'm a sucker for Scarlet Ibis. I really am. I don't know if this is a very good Scarlet Ibis area, though. It's more of a bigger bird area. Ooh, look at this guy, the Kintosaurus. Wow, that's cool. All right, let's keep moving. Find a bird. Find a bird. There's a lionfish. Saw a lot of lions. There's a Spanish lynx. I did not see any Spanish lynx, actually. Um, maybe some of the Spix macaws? Perhaps? Is this area good for him? I think this area is good for him. All right, we can put down like a little squeaky toy. And why not? Let's put in a, let's put in a male and a female Spix macaw. Just to add a little splash of color. Oh, because we have no money. Never mind. Let's go with something a little bit more affordable. <laughs> that's, that's kind of an investment for the future. I really needed to pay attention to how much money we have. The Indian blue pea file might be kind of fun. In fact, let's just put in one peafowl. Like one handsome male and one female. And a flash of color that we need over here. There we go. Oh my gosh, look at this child and his adorable hat. I didn't even know we had these hats. Oh, I'm in love. All right, so I think we did pretty good. Except for the fact that this part of the zoo looks like a barren wasteland. And this part is looking much better though. So let's come in and give everybody a little bit of a scrub-a-dub-dub. I like, it looks like our keeper can get in and out. Zoo personnel, wonderful. I might need to make like a little path over here. All right, and I like it. See what I mean? It just looks like a nice little naturalistic area that is sort of set off to the side. This kid's enjoying it. Oh, let's get some benches over here. Oh, that would be so cool. All right, let's get some benches over here. Maybe put like a little bench right there. Maybe a little bench, in, mm, maybe not right there. Maybe like right here? In front of the bathrooms? That makes sense to me, like have a bench right in front of the bathrooms. And there's a bunch of people lined up. We really need to get some restaurants pretty soon. All right, what do you think, Kidlet? And Blue is gonna go give birth. Okay. All right, Blue. We have so many kangaroos. Why is Platypus too sick? Who knows? Because they won't eat. <laughs> Why? I don't understand. I don't understand. Hopefully they'll take care of themselves. Do I need to move you? Are you stuck? Come and eat. There we go. Hopefully that'll help. And Old Salty is doing fine. And this looks great if you ask me. We've got a new beautiful pea file over here. So this is really pretty because you can just come over and just kind of see the birds hanging out in their beautiful little spots. Can we get the pea file to like spread his beautiful wings? Show off his lovely feathers? I saw a lot of pea file at the Kansas City Zoo, but only males, interestingly enough. I didn't see any females. And they were all separated. All right, so let's come over. Hello, handsome. Wait, hello, my lovely birds. So a little garden of birds is what we have just completed. But all right, you guys, so I'm gonna start looking up some facts about the animals that we are adding into our beautiful zoo so that we can continue to educate ourselves about the beauty of the natural world as we continue to build up our zoo with our very stubborn platypi. <laughs> oh, goodness. And here's a good question for those of you who are experienced in platypi trivia. How many platypus are estimated to be out in the wild? I would love to learn that. And I really, I hope we can get them eating soon. There's the baby. Did you see the little baby? There he is. This platypus is walking on water. Oh gosh. 
Well, we'll figure it out eventually. Maybe they maybe they can't get in the water anymore. All right. Well, I'm going to wrestle with the platypus issues. And then we will be back here next time to learn more about the animals that we are adding in. To give the spotted couscous perhaps a bigger exhibit. And to try to just educate ourselves some more about some cool facts. And if you guys have any rattling around in your brains, please feel free to share them in the comment sections below. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.